Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this rainy, cool Sunday morning, the last Sunday in February. But we're glad to have you as we gather together to worship, as we gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather together as God's wonderful people to pray for one another, to fellowship with one another, to lift up one another, to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people to worship Him. Hymn number 707, the hymn of promise. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to lift up all those that are sick, those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of them. We ask you to continue to pray for Marlene. She's still having problems with uh, uh, taking those antibiotics for the diverticulitis, and also her right knee is swollen. So. We just ask the Lord to touch her and continue to be with her in a mighty way. Uh, we want to lift up Betty Thomason. She's going to have some tests this coming week, and we just ask the Lord to be with her. We ask you also to pray for my brother's wife, Sylvia. Uh, she got out of the hospital on Friday. She's been there for about 10 days, and so... Uh, we ask the Lord to touch her. and uh, We want to remember the family of uh, Dr. Charles Johnson. Uh, he passed away on Friday. He was the former DS of the Greenville District, and uh, I've known Charles a long time. And uh, we ask the Lord to be with Dolores and the family and watch over them. Uh, we pray for the people in Ukraine and also the people in Russia and all that area. We just ask the Lord to be in the midst and uh, we need the Lord's help in a mighty way. The whole world needs the Lord's help this day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, we hear the cry of people everywhere. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might be with the people of Ukraine and Heavenly Father, that you might watch over them. 
Heavenly Father, there's so much turmoil in the world today. Lord, we need your touch, and we need it in a mighty way. Lord, we thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for walking with us day by day and encircling us with your loving arms and holding us close and blessing us mightily. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for what your son Jesus Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. It's through his shed blood that we find life and we find it abundantly and we find that assurance of eternal life. It is in your son Jesus Christ that we find hope for each day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that hope and for that assurance of eternal life. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts. May your Spirit continue to guide and direct each and every one of us as you draw us closer to you and closer to one another. Heavenly Father, that we might love one another as you have loved us. Heavenly Father, be with each and every one of us in a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that have been lifted up this morning. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one. You know their needs this morning. And Lord, we just ask that you might meet their needs. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of them, and Lord, you know what each and every one of these are going through. Lord, we ask that you might be with them, that you might meet their needs. And Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and the glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 368, My Hope is Built.
Our Psalter reading today is found on page 741. We're reading from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You have given me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, O people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the righteous as God's own. Be angry, but do not sin. Commune with your own hearts in your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they that have when their grain and wheat abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to serve you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every gift that's been given this day. Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used to make a difference in the lives of people everywhere. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you might bless those that continue to give week after week to make that difference. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might bless them a hundredfold this day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
In the Gospel of Luke, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 28. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that Jesus took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his counsel was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there taught with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were asleep, heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the mountain, much people met them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life unto each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have gathered here today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, we ask for the anointing of every word that is spoken and every word that is received. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject today is the storms will come, but there's hope. The storms of life will come to each and every one of us, but there is hope. There's not a one of us this morning that's here that sometime or another in our life that we will face the storms of life, for the storms will come. And the storms will come in many different ways, in many different shapes, many different sizes. They will come quickly and they will come suddenly. And sometimes they will take their time in coming. But the storms of life will come to each and every one of us. But there is hope. The storms of life will not only come to us as individuals, but the storms of life will come to our spouses. The storms of life will come to our children. The storms of life will come to our families. The storms of life will come to each and every nation. Right now, we're in the midst of the storm. We stand with the people in Ukraine. Here in this great land of ours, we're going through a midst of the storm. The prices of gas continues to go up. Ordinary working people are having difficulty in being able to fill their gas tanks in order to go back and forth to work. People that are on a fixed income is having difficulty 
in buying groceries and everything is affected by the price of gas and everything continues to go up and up and the price will continue to go up and up. And in this country, we have shut down the pipelines of, of so much and now we're dependent on Russia and Russia is now invading Ukraine because over the last year we in this great nation has made Russia rich and so now we have storm clouds all over and now Putin is, is talking about nuclear forces and so you can imagine what will happen if nuclear weapons come into the picture it involves the whole world. The storm clouds will be everywhere, but there's hope. As long as we continue to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, there is hope. In our scripture this morning, for some 40 years, I preached this scripture over and over again where Jesus takes Peter and James and John up on the mountain and we talk about a mountaintop experience and that every one of us need a mountaintop experience. Every one of us need to be able to come out of the midst of the storm and go up on the mountain, come out of the valley of the shadow of death and, and go to the mountain to be there with our Lord. Every one of us needs to experience that mountaintop experience in our hearts. But this week, the Lord showed me something different about the scripture. Why did Jesus take Peter, James, and John up on the mountain. We have to go back about eight days and look what happened for us to understand why Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on the mountain. For Jesus had took his disciples to a place called Caesarea Philippi, and he asked them, what does the world say about me? And some say, well, you are John the Baptist, and some says you are Jeremiah, some says you are Elijah, some says you are one of the other prophets. And Jesus turned to his disciples but, and said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter spoke up and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon Bar-Jonah, this did not come from man, but this came from God. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not stand against it. And then Jesus said to his disciples, I must go to Jerusalem I will face the chief priests and the scribes and the elders and I will be killed. I will die, but on the third day I will rise again. And Simon Peter tried to rebuke him and he said, get behind me, Satan, for these things are not of God but of man. You see, these disciples had given up their life. And for three and a half years, they had followed Jesus. And now for the first time, they hear that Jesus says, I'm going to Jerusalem and I will die. And on the third day, I will rise again. You can imagine what went through the minds of those disciples. What are we going to do? We thought that 
Jesus was going to set up his kingdom there in Jerusalem and we would be part of it. But now he says he's going to be killed. He's going to leave us. What are we going to do? Are we going back to be fishermen? Are we going back to be tax collectors? What are we going to do with our lives? For six days, there is a silence. You don't hear anything from Jesus or the disciples. For six days, they're going through the midst of the storm, wondering what they're going to do with their lives. For their lives have been turned upside down. Jesus is going to be killed. And so Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on the mountain. And he gives them a glimpse of glory. So that those disciples will know that death is not the end. But there's more. There's hope. And those disciples will need that hope in the days ahead because they will face many different storms. But then on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit would come upon them and fill them with the power from on high. And those disciples would be able to go forth to change the world. But it was because there in the midst of the storm, Jesus Christ came to them and he revealed unto himself the glory of God so that they would have hope that they would be able to come down off the mountain, go down into the valley and do the work of Christ. This morning as we go through the storms of life, the Lord wants us to know that there is hope and that he will be with us always, even unto the end. The story is told of a 27-year-old woman. Her sister had just had a child and her younger brother had just got married. Her mother had just died with cancer. She was the middle child. And so it fell upon her to look after her mother while she had cancer. But it was her mother who had always clapped the loudest at her recitals. It was her mother who offered up the tissue when she told how heartbroken she was. It was her mother who stood beside her when her father died. It was her mother who was there when she graduated from college. Her mother had always been there for her. And so now it was her time to take care of her mother. She took her to the doctor. She provided the meals for her. She looked after her. But then her mother died, and she was sitting there in the church, grieving by herself because her oldest sister had a husband and a little child. Her younger brother had a new wife, but she was all alone, wondering what she was going to do with her life as she sat there grieving. All of a sudden, the back door of the church opened up and a young man came down the aisle and he came down and he sat down beside her. She wondered what in the world was this young man doing sitting beside her. After a while, he said, why do they keep saying Margaret? Margaret this and Margaret that, when her name is Mary. And after a while, she said, they keep saying her name is Margaret rather than Mary. Is this not the Lutheran church? And she said, oh, no, the Lutheran church is across the road. 
And as she sat there, she began to smile and kind of laugh because the young fella had got the wrong church and was at the wrong funeral. And she looked over at him and he was laughing because he had got to the wrong, he was at the wrong church and he had missed his aunt's funeral because he went to the wrong church. After the service was over and they walked out, he told her his name and he said, would you like to have a cup of coffee this afternoon? And she said, it'd be okay. A year later, they were married in a little country church where he was the assistant pastor. 37 years later, they're still married. Folks, when the storms of life comes, there's hope. As long as we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, there's hope. The storms of life is going to come to each and every one of us in some way, shape, or form. But as long as we keep our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, there is hope. That hope is found in Jesus Christ. Hymn number 407, first and last verse, close to thee, close to thee. Heavenly Father, we know that the storms of life will surely come our way. But Heavenly Father, we know that if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, there is hope. And that your precious Holy Spirit will go with us and guide us and direct us in all the ways. That we can know that we're not alone that you will be with us always, even until the end. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.